Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're talking about Terraform, what Terraform is, and I'm also going to give you a small example uh, using Terraform to set up some stuff in AWS, uh, but let's jump into it. Okay, so Terraform is a product by HashiCorp, and uh, it's best described as an infrastructure as code project. Um, it is a type of configuration management. I did another video on configuration management. I can link that in the description. However, Terraform is mostly focused around external resources. Um, things like, you know, cloud instances or domain names or DNS or stuff like that. Uh, whereas the configuration management I talked about in the previous video is more focused about installing software on a computer or setting up configuration files. Um, I'm currently using Terraform to run uh, pre-commit CI in AWS. Uh, Terraform has some nice flexibility in that you can use all sorts of different cloud providers with it. Uh, let me just show you what some of my pre-commit CI Terraform looks like. Um, so this is my Terraform repository. I've decided to split it up based on particular resource nouns in things. So like everything about the, uh, you know, Lambda web role lives inside this uh, role Lambda web uh, Terraform file. And this is the syntax that Terraform uses. So this is called HCL, which is, I think it's HashiCorp configuration language, which is kind of this, I don't know, JSON-like, YAML-like sort of structure. Um, I actually think the, the HCL is pretty nice for what it is. Um, but you can see here that I've set up a policy document for assume role. I've set up the actual IAM role here, and I've set up some permissions for that particular IAM role here. So you can see it can uh, write to CloudWatch logs, and it can read uh, two different secrets from Secrets Manager. And oh, I guess it can also post to an SQS queue. It can post to SNS. Um, it can read and write from Dynamo. Uh, for a bunch of different Dynamo things. Uh, but anyway, you can see I basically declared how I want this code to set up, uh, or how, this, how I want these resources to be set up. And then what Terraform will do is it'll take that code and it will apply it uh, and change the state of your ecosystem, so to speak. Um, so I wanted to show you a quick example of Terraform today in AWS. I'm gonna start by just making a blank Git repository. This will make it easier to show what files are here and what Terraform is kind of doing behind the scenes. Um, and I have an AWS account that's already set up. Um, this also already has some instances running because it's the development, <laughs> it's the development account for pre-commit CI. Um, and what we're gonna try and do today is start some EC2 instances just by writing some, some Terraform code um, and not clicking around the console. We'll click around the console to show the results of things. Um, but I'm gonna just write the code here. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to get started with Terraform is set up your providers. These are the things that configure um, what remotes you're talking to. So in this case, we're gonna be using AWS. I usually like to put that in a file uh, called AWS provider. It doesn't actually matter what you name your files as long as you're consistent here. Um, and I gotta copy paste a little bit of code here. Uh, this will configure us to use the AWS provider and we're gonna use the default profile. I've already configured my credentials on my machine, so I don't have to reconfigure those. Um, and we're gonna use the US East one region. Once I've set up a provider, uh, or anytime I change a provider, I need to run Terraform in it. Um, I actually have an alias, so if you see me type TF at any point in the video, it's because I've forgotten to write out the full command, um, but I have, I have alias TF to Terraform. Um, this is an old habit that I had. This actually wasn't an alias originally, I think. Um, this was just how one of the previous companies I worked at packaged the Terraform command. Um, and so I, I learned a proprietary thing for the wrong reason, um, but now it's kind of stuck for me. Okay, so after I run Terraform in it, you'll see that it has installed these provider plugins. It's actually gone to the internet and downloaded the AWS provider, uh, which contains a ton of code. Um, and after we've done this, if we do get status, you'll see that it has created this .terraform directory. Inside this Terraform directory is the code for those particular modules and providers and stuff. Um, you can see here's the AWS provider at that particular version. You don't ever really need to look inside this directory, so what I recommend is get ignoring it. Get ignore Terraform. 
Uh, it has also made this .terraform.lock.hcl file as well. Uh, this pins the versions of your particular uh, providers. Um, you can check this file in if you want. I like to live a little bit dangerously, so I don't, uh, but this will, this will ensure that you keep installing a consistent version of whatever provider modules you have. So you can check this in if you want. Um, let's, you know, let's add it just in case. Uh, AWS provider, git ignore, and that'll be our first commit. Set up AWS provider. Okay, cool. Uh, the other thing that Terraform comes with, which is really nice, is it has a code formatter that's set up, uh, that's easy to set up already, and that is Terraform fumpt. Um, and if some file were misformatted, say I had indented these too much and I ran Terraform fumpt, it will fix that for me. So you can see it has reset that back to its original content. So this is pretty useful. Definitely recommend that when working with Terraform. Okay, and so now we're going to set up an EC2 instance. That's what I want to do today. So usually what I do is Google Terraform AWS EC2 instance. I think that's the name of the module. No, I guess it's just AWS instance. Um, some of the modules have their names in them. Some of them don't. Uh, <laughs> things are not always consistent. Uh, the other thing that's really, really nice about Terraform is their documentation is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, it's actually to the point where I read the Terraform documentation instead of reading the AWS documentation because I find that this often has better enumeration of the various options that you can use. Um, and since I'm doing infrastructure as code, I might as well be here in the first place. Um, and in a lot of cases, they give you an example. We're actually going to take this example almost exactly. Um, so let's copy this first bit of code here. And let's say instance.tf. And if we paste this code, this is a data resource. This is a, this or it's a data entry. It's not actually a resource here. So resources are things that provision data is retrieving information from the environment. Uh, in this case, what it's doing is we are retrieving an AWS AMI. We're trying to find the version of Ubuntu that has been published by Canonical. Um, they publish application mis machine images, AMIs. Uh, and you can use those to start your instance. You can kind of think of an AMI as like a Docker image um, for, for an EC2 instance, but it's not Docker, it's just an analogy. Um, and they have some particular filters here. So in this case, we're filtering for Focal Ubuntu 2004, and we want the most recent one, and we want HVM. And we also want to make sure that the owner is this particular account ID, which happens to be canonical, the creators and owners of Ubuntu. And um, so this on its own doesn't do anything. It will pull down this information when, when you run Terraform plan or Terraform apply, uh, which we'll get to plan and apply in a bit. Um, but we also want to get that instance as well. Um, so let's grab this here. So we're going to make an AWS instance. And I actually don't care about tags, so we're going to get rid of that. Uh, this instance type is free. So if you're following this tutorial, and you don't have any instances set up already, you can run a T3 micro for an entire, uh, I think it's for a 12 year trial period, uh, but if it, you can have it running constantly and it's free for a year, essentially. Um, but note here that we'll, we'll just call this instance. It doesn't actually matter what you name this here, um, but you will be able to reference it by a dotted path. So you can see here we're referencing this data AWS AMI Ubuntu here, uh, and then retrieving its AMI ID, its image ID out of here. Um, and we're just saying that we want an instance type of T3 micro. This is actually enough code to get started to demo what I wanted to show you. Once we have this, uh, we can do what's called a plan. A plan will show you what Terraform is about to do, but it won't perform it. So if we do Terraform plan now, and I'll spin a little bit here and try and figure out some stuff. And you'll notice here that we get, uh, it didn't mention anything about my data, Thing here because it actually it just retrieved that information but it didn't actually you know it isn't a managed resource so it doesn't actually do anything here however you can see it has generated this ami uh, by pulling this particular um, ami image information down uh, you'll see here that it also set our t3 micro and there's a million options for ec2 instances we don't really care about many of these at all um, but yeah we'll we'll just we'll just leave those like that um, but yeah, this is a plan, so it shows you what is about to happen, but it doesn't do anything. If we were to want to apply this, we will run 
terraform apply. And what apply will do is it'll take your configuration and it will change those external resources to match that. It also you know, shows you a plan and prompts you as to whether you wanna say yes or no here. Uh, we are going to say yes. And it should start spinning up this instance. Now, spinning up an instance takes a little while, so it might not show up immediately. But we can click here and what's the little GIF where it's just mashing F5 repeatedly? That's kind of what we're doing here. Yeah, so you can see it has started creating this instance here. Um, and it is actually already running. Wow. Um, but yeah, we can take this particular instance and we should be able to SSH to it. Well, actually, we won't be able to SSH to it. <laughs> That's right, because <laughs> we didn't give it a key pair, so we don't we don't have a way to SSH to it. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. So, <laughs> um, hmm, what can we do here? I mean, I can show you how to SSH to something. Let's see. So what I have set up is um, I have a public key that I have set up here. And so that's an AWS key pair. Let's actually copy this here. You would take this from your um, ID rsa.pub if you have an SSH key. So you can see that these are the same exact value here. Um, and so we're gonna make this instance.tf. Uh, we want to add a key pair here. And then, uh, how do I use the AWS key pair? Uh, key name. Is that an option for Terraform AWS key name? It is. Perfect. So then we can use key name equals AWS key pair dot acetilly dot name. Uh, I'm actually going to call this acetilly2 because otherwise it's going to conflict with the one that already exists in um, in my environments because uh, this is the same account as the other one. Uh, okay, so if we do TF plan again, it should say, oh, this is probably dot, oh, it's dot key name. Key underscore name. Um, if we plan this again, oops, I used the alias. <laughs> uh, old habits die hard. Okay, so you can see here that it has done a lot of changes here. Uh, note here that it says it must be replaced. So one part of Terraform is uh, if you're changing a resource in a way that it can't do an in-place change, it will have to destroy that instance and then recreate it. Uh, and so that's actually what will happen here because we changed the key name. Uh, this forces it to be replaced. You'll notice that it also has a bunch of like unknown changed information here. This is just because now that the instance exists, it has a lot more state. Um, and since we have to replace it, we're going back into this sort of unknown state here. Uh, you'll notice down here that it also is going to create that AWS key pair, which is good for us. So let's do Terraform apply again. Um, and what this should do is it should delete that EC2 instance and make a brand new one. Um, so we're just going to say yes, because we already looked at the plan. And you'll see that it did destroy on that instance and we created the key pair. So now it should be trying to create that new instance. So you should see, yeah, you can see the T3 micro is already gone. Actually clear this filter so we can see the old one. So you can see it is in the shutting down state right now. So it's trying to start a new one. And it takes a while. You can see that it is, uh, it's waiting for it to be destroyed before creating a new one. Uh, there are options to change the life cycle here such that it can, you know, create or destroy things in a different order. Um, oh, this is actually going to take a while, isn't it? Dang it. <laughs> well, we'll just wait here. Um, while that's running, I'm going to talk about how you can tear all this down when you're done. And usually you don't want to run this command <laughs> in production. Um, but if you're just setting up something small as a demo, such as this example here, uh, you would want to use the destroy command when you're done. And so that's Terraform destroy, destroy. Uh, it will just run, you know, it'll, it'll delete all the resources for you. It'll also prompt before doing that and show you a plan so that you make sure that you're not doing something you don't want to do. What other commands are there that are worth mentioning? Um, talked about format. Uh, you can use Terraform login and logout if you're using Terraform Enterprise. I'm actually using Terraform Enterprise. It's really nice. They essentially give you a free 
remote storage of all of your state so you don't have to manage it yourself. Um, and as long as you're, you know, working individually or less than like five people or something like that, it works great. Um, yeah, I think that's most of what, oh, cool. And we applied here. So now we should see our new instance here and I should be able to SH to it. So this is the uh, instance here. Do we have a public IP? We do. It's in the initialization state, so we might not be able to SH to it yet. Uh, but we SH using the Ubuntu username. And assuming that key pair got set up properly, I should be able to make this happen. Of course, it has to boot and then, you know, set up SSH and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can see we have a new key name here. Oh, we're in the default security group. Dang it. <laughs> the default security group doesn't have SSH access. So anyway, this isn't going to work. Uh, but you can imagine I could configure the security group and allow it to be SSHable and do all this all this other stuff. Um, but you basically end up building out this set of code here. Um, and we're going to add the instance.tf file that contains our actual source code here. Now note that there is this terraform.tf state file and this tf state.backup file. These contain a kind of cached representation, kind of the, the brain of Terraform of what it thinks the world looks like. And you don't want to check this in because often it contains credentials and other stuff, um, but also you'll constantly get merge conflicts with it. Uh, the recommendation for managing this TF state file is to store it remotely somewhere. So this is where like Terraform Enterprise comes into play because they store this TF state file for you. Um, I've seen other solutions where this gets versioned in S3 with like lock files. So you make sure that only one developer is running a Terraform plan at a time, uh, but there's all sorts of complication around that. So that's the, that's the TF state file. Um, and actually, uh, I know this file isn't formatted properly, so I'm actually going to steal a git hook um, from my pre-commit CI Terraform, uh, which will allow me to pre-commit.yaml repos, which will allow me to run Terraform format on, um, on git commit, so that way I don't ever commit something that's poorly uh, formatted in here. So and then I'll run pre-commit install and add the pre-commit configuration. And now when I run git commit uh, and ec2 instance, you'll see here that it is it is run Terraform format. And since there was a format change um, to re-indent this, it blocked the commit and you do that. And then you can commit this. And again, the last thing I want to show you was Terraform destroy. Uh, which will tear down all of the resources when you're done. So you can see it's deleting the key pair, deleting that EC2 instance, and we can just say yes and let it run. But anyway, that's Terraform. Hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.